Good day, Grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics brought to you by Turnable. In this lesson, we're going to carry on looking at factorization, but we're going to use case substitution. Then if we get time, which I think we will have, we'll move on to simultaneous equations and finally quadratic word problems. So let's get started straight away. So if you get given an equation like this, which is x squared minus 2x minus 3 over x squared minus 2x equals 2, obviously in order to factorize this, we want to get rid of the denominator. So one of the things that we could do is we could multiply the whole thing through by the denominator. Okay, so if we did that, do you agree to be x squared, x squared minus 2x, minus 2x times by x squared minus 2x, minus 3 over x squared minus 2x times by x squared minus 2x is equal to 2 times by x squared minus 2x. And this would cancel, so yay, but then you'd end up with this horrible thing that had x to the 4 minus 2x cubed minus 2x cubed plus, and it would just be terrible. It would be awful to do. So what they've realized and what we can do is that we could substitute. So what we're going to do is we're going to let, and they call it k substitution because what we're going to do is we're going to let k equal x squared minus 2x. Okay, so now let's try that. If we do that, do you agree then we have k minus 3 over k is equal to 2? Hmm, that is much more doable. Do you agree? I still need to get rid of the denominator, but if I do that, that becomes k squared minus 3 is equal to 2k. And now that looks like a pretty trinomial. I just need to rearrange. It's going to be k squared minus 2k minus 3 equals 0. And that's very doable. We've got the factors in front of k squared. The coefficients are 1 and 1. The factors of 3 are 3 and 1. This minus tells me that the signs have to be different. So therefore we can say that it's going to be minus 3 plus 2. So it's going to be k minus 3, k plus 1 sorry, plus 1, equals 0. Therefore, k is equal to 3, or k equals 1. And now this is the part, okay, so this is pretty easy. The, the difficult part, or the part that most of my students make mistakes is, is they then leave this answer. They go, whoo-hoo, finished, that was easy. But you're not, because they didn't ask you to solve for k. You let k equal something. They asked you to solve for x. So we need to now let so I'll finish the sum. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go, okay, well, k equals 3. So we're going to go 3 is equal to x squared minus 2x. Therefore, 0 is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. And now we need to factorize this. So go 0 is equal to, and the factors of x squared are just x and x. It's going to be a minus and a plus. Oh, Sorry, I don't know why I'm doing that plus so far over. Okay. Ah, uh, green. And you'll look, see it's exactly the same as this. So again, it'll be nice and easy. It becomes minus, so minus three, and then it's going to be minus three and plus one. Yes, exactly the same. Therefore, x is equal to three or, sorry, that's a negative x is equal to minus 1. Okay, so that's nice and easy, but we haven't finished because of the fact, that's supposed to be minus 1, we still have to let k equal to minus 1 and solve for this part. So if we do that, we get minus 1 is equal to x squared minus 2x. So 0 is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 1. So let's see if we can factorize that. Again, the coefficients of x squared are going to be 1 and 1, so it's going to be 1x and 1x. The signs are going to be the same, and they're both going to be minus. And the factors of 1 are 1 and 1. So therefore, we can say x equals 1 
or x equals 1. So do you see that we actually have four solutions, which we should have, because remember when we multiplied it out, we ended up with x to 4. So we should have four solutions. Admittedly, these are two equal solutions, but they are still separate solutions, so therefore we've got four solutions. Okay, let us look at this one. So yeah, we've got x squared minus 2x, all squared, minus 8 is equal to 7 to times by x squared minus 2x. So again, and they've made it nice and easy for us, everything in the bracket, we're going to let equal k. k, so let's write it out. We're going to go let k equal x squared minus 2x. And grade 11s, um, I love the fact that you're watching this lesson, but what I would really like you to do ideally is that either while you're watching it, which is a bit difficult to pause while you're watching it live, but what I would suggest you do is re-watch the video again. Afterwards, you just have to press the same link as, as you got this time and you get to the same point. And then pause the video at the beginning of each question as it comes up and then try them for yourself because just watching doesn't really teach you anything. You know, it's very easy to go, mm, mm, mm. I mean, the number of times you guys must have thought you understood exactly what the teacher was saying while they were in class. And then when you got home, you're like trying to do your homework and you're like, what? I don't understand a thing. And that's because it's very easy to follow, but not so easy to do. So the best way to do this is to practice and to do your own questions for yourself. So you need to pause the video and then try this for yourself and then let the video play and see how you did. Okay, so we're letting k equal x squared minus 2x. So everything in the brackets is equals k. So we've got k squared minus 8 is equal to 7k. So now we can rearrange this. It becomes k squared minus 7k minus 8 equals 0. So that definitely looks like a trinomial. So we can factorize it. The coefficients of k squared are just going to be k and k. It's just 1 and 1. The minus tells you that the signs are different. So it's a minus and a plus. And they need to add up to 7. So what are factors of 8? They're 8 and 1. Okay. They are 4 and 2. And they have to add up to 7. So obviously 4 and 2 is either 6 or 2, so that's not going to work. So it has to be 8 and 1. So we've got minus 8 plus 1 will give me minus 7. And this equals 0. Therefore, we can say that k equals 8 or k is equal to minus 1. Okay. But again, we're not finished. We weren't asked to solve for k. We were asked to solve for x. So what do we need to do? We need to substitute back. So we're going to go 8 is equal to x squared minus 2x. Hmm. So let's solve. 0 is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 8. So your factors are going to be x and x. It's just 1 and 1. It's going to be a minus something and a plus something. And we want something that adds up to 2. So we've got our factors of 8 and 1 and 4 and 2. So it has to be minus 4 and plus 2 because of the fact that minus 4 plus 2 gives me minus 2. So it's going to be plus 2 and minus 4. Therefore, we can say x plus 2 equals 0 or x minus 4 equals 0. Therefore, we can say x is equal to minus 2 or x is equal to 4. Excellent. Have we finished? No, we haven't because we still have to do the studio. So let's try that. Um, no, we've used that color. Let's try another one. So we're going to go minus 1 is equal to x squared minus 2x. If we take it across, we get 0 is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 1. If we factorize it, our coefficient of x squared is 1, so it's just x and x. This plus sign tells me that both the signs are the same and they're both minus. And the only factors of 1 are just 1 and 1. So again, we've got that x minus 1 equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, x equals 1. And there we go. So this time again, we have got or 
x equals 1. We've got four possible solutions, of which two are exactly the same. So we've got two equal and two unequal, but they're all real and rational. Right, now let's look at this one. We've got minus 24 is equal to 10. x squared plus 5x plus x squared plus 5x all squared. Okay, so that's quite nice because again, what we're going to do is let everything inside the bracket equal what? Let everything inside the bracket equal k, right? So you're going to go let k equal x squared plus 5x, okay? You really don't have to use the letter k. You can use any letter that suits you, but since it's called k substitution and the reason reason they use k is because it's seldom used in any other as a variable in maths and physics. So that's why they use the letter K. So let's go through it. It becomes minus 24 equals 10K plus K squared. Okay, so now we can rearrange it. It becomes K squared plus 10K plus 24 equals naught. All I've done is taken the k squared and the 10k and written them in the right order, and then I've taken the 24 to the other side of the equal sign to become a plus. Okay, so your coefficients are k, are k and k. Your signs are the same and they're both plus. And now we need factors of 10 that add, factors of 24 that add up to 10. So our factors of 24 are 24 and 1, 12 and 2. 8 and 3, 6 and 4, and then 4 and 6. Okay, so we're fine. 24 plus 1 gives me 25, does not add up to 10. 12 plus 2 does not add up to 10. 8 plus 3 does not add up to 10, but 6 and 4 do. So that is 6 and 4. Therefore, we can say k plus 6 equals 0, or k plus 4 equals 0. Therefore, k is going to equal to minus 6, or k is going to equal to minus 4. Okay, have we finished? And the answer is no, we haven't finished. We need to substitute this back into our original. So we're going to go minus 6 is equal to x squared plus 5x. So you've got x squared plus 5x, change it across, becomes plus 6 equals 0. And again, we need to factorize our trinomials. The coefficient of x squared is 1, so therefore it's x and x. This sign tells us that the signs need to stay the same, and they're both plus. And the factors of 6 that will add up to 5 are 3 and 2. Excellent. Therefore, we can say that x plus 3 equals 0, or x plus 2 equals 0, Therefore, x is equal to minus 3 or x is equal to minus 2. Excellent. Have we finished? No, we've not finished because we have not checked to see whether k equals minus 4 gives us decent solutions with this. So we need to go minus 4 is equal to x squared plus 5x. So therefore, we've got 0 is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 4. Okay, remember we're going to factorize this. So the factors of x squared are just going to be x and x. This is a plus, and therefore both the signs are the same and they're both plus. And the only factors of 4 that are going to add up to 5 are 4 and 1. Therefore, we've got x plus 4 equals 0, or x plus 1 equals 0. Therefore, do you agree I can say x is equal to minus 4, or x is equal to minus 1? There you go. That's a nice one here. Right. Excellent. Let's try this one. Hmm. So this one looks a little bit different because if you look at it carefully, you can see it's x squared minus 18 plus x plus 72 over x squared plus x. So when you originally look at it, you can't really see any common phrases or expressions. But if I had to rearrange this and write this as x squared plus x minus 18 plus 72 over x squared plus x 
equals naught. Do you agree that that is the same as that? So I can let k equal x squared plus x. Okay. So then do you agree I've got k plus 18 plus 72 over k, oops, sorry, that's minus, equals 0. Okay. Equals 0. So then what can I do? I can get rid of my k by multiplying through with k to get rid of the denominator. So we've got k squared minus 18k plus 72 equals naught. And now again, we need to factorize. The coefficients of k are just k and k. This sign here is a positive, which means that both signs are the same and they're both minus. And now we need to look at the factors of 72 that are going to add up to 18. Okay, so it's obviously 72 and 1, 36 and 2, then 3 goes into 7, twice remainder, 1, so that's 24, 4 goes into 7, once remainder, 3, so it's going to be 8, 5 doesn't work, 6 goes into 72 12 times, 7 doesn't work, 8 goes into 72 9 times, okay, we're getting somewhere, um, 10, 11, and we're back to 12. Okay, so what do we want? We want two numbers that when added up together give us 18. Okay, hmm, but when multiplied together, give us 72. That's going to be interesting. Let's try that again. Have I messed up? It's x squared minus 18 plus x is equal to 72 of x squared. So it becomes k minus, so it becomes k squared minus 18k plus 72. Um, so I'm right, they're both plus and they're both minus. Um, it's obviously not 72, not 36, not 24. 18 and 4 gives me 22. 12 and 6 gives me 18. Ta-da! There we go. I was being doff. <laughs> okay, right, so it's 12 and 6. We need two numbers when they add up, give us 18. Why do we want them to add up? Because minus 18, I mean, minus 18 will equal minus 12 minus 6. So because this is a minus, so it's going to be minus 12 minus 6 has to equal to minus 18. Excellent. So therefore, this is going to be a 12 and this is a 6 equals 0. Therefore, k is equal to 12 or k equals 6. Excellent. Have we finished? And the answer is no, we have not finished. We now need to substitute into the studio. So we're going to let k equal 12, and you're going to get 12 is equal to x squared plus x. Therefore, 0 is equal to x squared plus x minus 12. So again, the coefficients of x squared are going to be x and x. And the coefficient of, well, what's 12 going to break up into? The minus tells us that the signs are different. So we've got a plus and a minus. And your factors of 12 are 12 and 1. 6 and 2 and 4 and 3 and then the other way around, right? So we want something that when we subtract the 2, the positive difference is a 1. So 12 minus 1 is 11. 6 minus 2 is 4. And 4 minus 3 is 1. And why do I want to subtract? Well, I'm going to get a plus and a minus. And a plus times a minus is a minus. So I need to subtract, okay? In other words, let me show it to you this way. Let's say the coefficients are there, x and x, right? And let's say we've got 4 and 3. And let's say we've got plus 4 minus 1. So x times 4, remember you cross multiplying. x times 4 is 4x. x times minus 3 is minus 3x, which equals plus 1. But that only works if these signs are opposite, which means that we're subtracting them. If these signs are the same, it means we're adding them. So that becomes positive x. Okay, so in that case, we're looking for the factors. The factors are 4 and 3, and it's positive 4, negative 3. 
Therefore, we've got x plus 4 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0. Therefore, x equals minus 4 or x equals 3. Have we finished? No, we have not finished. I hear you shout at me. Why? Because we haven't worked with this number here, the x equals 6. So we have to again substitute into this equation here. Okay, for let k equal to x squared plus x. So we're going to go 6 is equal to x squared plus x. So let's put it in the proper form. It's going to be 0 is equal to x squared plus x minus 6. So now again, this is going to be x and x. The minus tells you it's minus and a plus. But the plus x tells you that the bigger of the two numbers is a positive. The bigger of the two numbers is going to be positive. So what are our factors? We've got x and x. Our factors are 6, are 6 and 1, and 3 and 2. So it has to be, the difference between them has to be 1. So 6 minus 1 is 5, so that's not going to work. But 3 minus 1 is 2, and we want a positive number, okay? So 3 minus 2 is 1, or 3 minus 1 is 2. The point is that we want a positive number, so it's going to be plus 3 minus 2. So it's going to be plus 3 minus 2 equals 0. Therefore, x minus 2 equals 0, or x equals th plus 3 equals zero. Sorry, I was getting ahead of myself. Therefore, you got x equals two or x equals minus three. And I apologize for the horrible orange yellow color. We won't use that color again. Okay, so you can see that even if it looks a bit tricky, we can still factorize using k-substitution if we just rearrange. So you've got to be aware of that. Okay. Similarly, yeah, we need to look at this and we need to see how we can rearrange this so that we can actually use the k substitution. So here is a bracket that's got 4x minus x squared and here is an x squared and a 4x. So I could write this as x squared minus 4x plus 10 minus 7 times 4x minus x squared is equal to minus 2. And it's almost the same but not identical. And we're going to do what is called a switch round. And you guys should know exactly what a switch round is by now, and you should have practiced it and used it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this bracket here, the second bracket, by minus to make it look like this. So I'm going to go x squared minus 4x plus 10. And the minus times minus is plus 7 x squared minus 4x is equal to negative 2. All I've done is I've multiplied this thing here by minus 1. I've multiplied by minus 1. That's what the switch round does. We multiply by minus 1 so that the whole of this becomes the same as this. And now we can take out a common factor. So if we do that, we can go, well, let's let we're not taking our common factor. We're basically substituting for k. We're letting k equal x squared minus 4x, right? So we've got k plus 10 plus 7k is equal to negative 2. Okay, all I've done is now that I've got my switch around, I can see that the second bracket is identical to x squared minus 4x. So I'm just substituting in. So now... It becomes really easy because I can just add up my like terms. You've got 8k is equal to minus 2 minus 10. Okay. Everybody with me? Therefore, you've got 8k is equal to minus 12. Right. And then what do we have? We've got, because remember, there's nothing else here we can do. We know like simultaneous equations or anything. So, I mean, I'm just looking for if there was anything I was missed, but I didn't. So k is equal to minus 12 over 8. Can I take out a common factor? Yes, I can. A 4. So k is equal to minus 3 over 2. 3 over 2. Okay, so k is equal to minus 3 over 2, but I'm not finished 
because they asked us to solve for x. So therefore, we can say that x squared minus 4x is equal to minus 3 over 2. Okay. So let's multiply everything by 2. So we get 2x squared minus 8x is equal to minus 3. Now we can bring that number across. So it becomes 2x squared minus 8x plus 3 equals 0. Hmm. And then let's see if this factorizes. I don't think it factorizes. I think we're going to have to use the formula. It becomes 2 and 1 and 1 and 3. 3 times 3 is 2 plus 1 is 1. That doesn't factorize nicely at all, does it? It's horrible, in fact. Okay, no big deal. We can use the formula. And the formula says x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And yes, it is possible for you guys to get a horrible question like this. So we know that the 2 is a, the whole of minus 8 is b, and the whole of this is c. So you've got minus minus 8 plus or minus the square root of minus 8 all squared minus 4 times by 2 times by 3 all over 2 times by 2. Okay. Minus times minus the plus, it becomes 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared is 64 minus 4 times two, 4 times 6 is 24 all over 4 which becomes 8 plus or minus the square root of 40 all over 4. 4 goes into 8 twice, so you get 2 plus or minus the square root of 40 all over 4. And I'm going to leave the answer like that because at this point in time, you can use your calculator, but chances are they'll say to you, solve this without the use of a calculator and leave your answer in third form. So there you go. So don't panic if you see something that looks like it could be a K substitution, and it actually is, except you need to take out, you need to just switch around. Don't panic about doing that. There's nothing wrong with that. And then don't panic if when you solve for the X, you find that it doesn't form something pretty, okay? A lot of times they'll give you a hint by saying either leave your answer in third form, or they'll say leave, give your answer correct to two decimal places. Okay, another one. Ah, now again, this doesn't look like there is anything to k-substitute in, okay? But if I had to multiply this out, do you agree it becomes x squared plus 3x? And now it looks identical to that, which is quite cool. So what we're going to do is, again, we're going to let k equal x squared plus 3x, okay? So if we do that, we've got k minus 5 over k is equal to 26. Right, so what do we know? We know we don't like k's at the bottom. So what do we have to do? We have to multiply everything through by k to get rid of that k at the bottom. So it becomes k squared minus 5 is equal to 26k. Then what do we do? We need to solve for this. So we're going to take the 26 across and it becomes k squared minus 26k minus 5 equals 0. Hmm. So now we've got a nice trinomial. I don't know if it's very pretty trinomial. I'm not seeing how it can be because we've got a 26 here. Oh, I see why it is because I have made a mistake. I was supposed to bring down a 6. Oh! <gasps> That's much nicer, much nicer. Now I can do this. And that's much nicer. Okay, why? Because we can get factors of 56 that possibly give you 26. Let's have a look at that. What are factors of 56? So obviously it's 56 and 1. 2 goes into 56. Twice remainder 1 is 28. And I'm not going to go any further because 28 and 2 give me 26. Do you see that? Let me show you how. What is the coefficients of k? It's just 1 and 1. This sign here is a minus, which tells you what? It tells you that the one sign here is a minus and the other sign here is a plus. 
And 56 is what? It splits into factors that are going to add up to 26. So 56 is first set of factors, either 56 and 1, obviously, or 28 and 2. So if I do 28 and 2, I can go minus 28 plus 2, which will give me minus 26. How nice is that? And that's exa exactly what we're going to do. Go to minus 28 plus 2. Therefore, k is equal to 28 or k is equal to minus 2. And again, I have to ask you, are we finished? And the correct answer is no, we are not finished. Why? Because we need to solve for x, not for k. So let's substitute this in. We're going to go 28 is equal to x squared plus 3x or x squared plus 3x is equal to minus 2. Now we're going to put them in trinomial form and I'm going to change color because I can. So this becomes x squared plus 3x minus 28 equals 0 or x squared plus 3x plus 2 equals 0. We're just taking everything to the one side with both of these sums. Right, now let's see if this works. We know that the coefficients of x squared are x and x is 1 and 1. 28, let's have a look at it. It's 28 and 1. What do we need? We need 1 to be positive and the other one to be negative and they must add up to 3. Okay, so 28 and 1. Then there is 14 and 2. And then there is 7. Oh, and then there's 7 and 4. Hmm. 7 and 4 have a difference of 3. That would work. So we've got 7 and 4. We need one to have a negative and the other one to have a positive. But we need plus 3. So if this is minus 7 and that was plus 4, do you agree that that would end up as being minus 3? So we have to go plus 7 minus 4. Therefore, x is equal to 7. Or x is equal to 4. Ta-da! Excellent. <laughs> now, let's try this one. Got factors. This are x and x. The factors of 2 are 2 and 1. And they're both positive. Otherwise, it doesn't happen. Therefore, x is equal to minus 2. Or x is equal to minus 1. Okay, so again, you need to look out to see if you can find something that we could possibly use for case substitution. Grade 11, there's nothing wrong with multiplying it out and then finding your k squared and then a or x squared or x cubed and then factorizing it and substituting back in. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? This is just an easier method, something that's going to almost guarantee that you will get it correct. Right, now let's look at this one. This one's a little bit more difficult because this one is the same as that. Hmm. So I'm going to let k equal x squared plus 2x minus 12. Then do you agree we've got 9 over k is equal to k? Okay, so then we've got 9 is equal to k squared. Now you're thinking, well, that's kind of stupid because the answer is 3. And the answer is not 3 because why? Because you have to remember that you have two possible roots when you've got a k squared. This becomes 0 is equal to k squared minus 9, which can be factorized into k minus 3, k plus 3 equals 0. Therefore, k is equal to 3 or k, k is equal to minus 3. Okay, have we finished? No, we have not finished because why? They didn't ask us for k, they asked us for x. They asked us for x. So we've got x squared minus 2x minus 12 is equal to 3. Or x squared minus 2x minus 12 is equal to minus 1. Okay. Sorry, that is actually a plus and that's a plus. Excellent. So now I can factorize this. I can go x squared plus 2x minus 12 minus 3 equals 0. 
x squared plus 2x minus 12 plus 1 equals 0. So it becomes x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals 0. Or x squared plus 2x minus 11 equals 0. Okay, so I said we could just factorize this, but can we? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Okay, so the factors of x are just 1 and 1, so that's nice and easy. That's just x and x. The minus tells me the signs are different. Okay, and the factors of 15 are 15 and 1, 5 and 3, and that's about it. Okay, and 3 and 5. So obviously it's not 15 and 1 because we don't want the difference of 2 or sum of 2, so therefore we want 5 and 3. So we want a positive 2, so it has to be positive 5, and a negative 3. Therefore, I can say x minus 3 equals 0, or x plus 5 equals 0. Therefore, I can say x equals 3, or x equals minus 5. Okay, that's the one. Now, let's look at this sum. Mm. We've got x squared plus 2x minus 11 is equal to 0. So we want there to be a difference of something to do with the 2. So we want a difference of 2. But the problem is that 11 is a prime number. So do you agree that that's not obviously factorizable? Okay, so we're going to need to use our formula. And x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So we're going to substitute into that. So we're going to go x is equal to b is minus 2, so it's minus 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 4, minus 4, times by a, which is 1, times by c, which is minus 11, all over 2 times by 1, which is minus 2, plus or minus the square root of 4, and minus times minus is plus 44, all over 3, which equals minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 48 over 3. And it isn't a pretty square root of 48, okay? It is an irrational number. Uh, let me just think about it. No, that's it. So therefore, our answers are either that x equals minus 2 plus square root 48 over 3, or x is equal to minus 2 plus the square root of 48 over 3, or x equals 3 and x equals minus 5. Those are your options. Okay, now we're moving on to simultaneous equations. Now, grade 11s, I hope that you understood about your quadratic formula and about your factorizing and about looking for case substitution questions because case substitution questions come up very often very very often and when i finish the section on simultaneous equations and that i'm going to do a whole bunch of exam paper questions questions that come out straight on the exam papers and then you'll see the type of questions we're getting including the case substitution questions Okay, so now we've got a bit of time left, so I'm moving on to simultaneous equations. And by the name, you should be able to realize that what we need to do is take simultaneous equations and simultaneously equate them. That's what simultaneous equations mean. We're going to use two equations to find the value of x and y. We're going to simultaneously equate them. Okay, so the first one is y plus x equals 5, and y minus x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals 0. Okay, grade 11s, there are a couple ways we can solve for this. We can either decide to solve both of them for y, and let them be equal, and then solve for it. Or what we can do is realize that the math kid is only in at a certain time. What we need to realize is that what we can do is, sorry, I don't know where I was. The couple of things we can do, we can either go y plus x equals 5 and we can solve for either x or y and substitute into that, okay? Or what we could do is 
we could actually equate these two and let y and, and sub subtract them and you'll get equation just out of x. And I'm going to do both so you can see what I'm talking about, okay? So let's first do the first one where we solve the first equation for y and we substitute in. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to say y plus x equals 5. Now let's take that as equation 1 and we're going to solve for y. So we're going to go y is equal to 5 minus x. Okay, and I'm going to call that 2. Now I'm going to solve, substitute 2 into that equation. So I'm going to go 5 minus x minus x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals 0. Okay, so do you agree then I can just multiply this out and add the like terms? So you go 5 minus x minus x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals 0. I'm just really getting rid of the brackets there. Let's add the like terms. You've got minus x squared. Minus x plus 3x is plus 2x. And plus 5 minus 5 it goes away, so it's 0. That makes it very easy. We can then divide both. We can get rid of the minus. So we get x squared minus 2x equals 0. Isn't that nice? And now you've got to be careful because very often what will students will do is they'll go, oh, well, this x squared minus 2x equals 0. We can take out a common factor of x and you're left with x squared x minus 2, which is perfectly correct. There's nothing wrong with that. That's very good. But then they discard the x and you can't discard the x. That's an option. What this expression is saying is either x equals 0 or x minus